Miles Teller is a superstar now, but a terrible accident nearly ended everything before his career had even begun. And that's not the only little-known fact about one of Hollywood's hottest leading men. It's strange to think what Top Gun Maverick would have been without the iconic performance by Miles Teller, but that almost was the case because acting wasn't his first career choice. Teller actually wanted to be a professional athlete. Teller told the Associated Press, I would have gone into baseball. If I was better at baseball, then that was like my first passion. Teller sadly didn't make it very far in his baseball career, admitting to people that he was pretty small in high school, and so he felt that held him back. He explained, I didn't hit my growth spur till my senior year. However, Teller's passion for baseball has persevered. He supports the Philadelphia Phillies, who were his grandmother's team, and can be regularly seen cheering them on from the sidelines. In fact, he spends so much time with the Phillies that, in 2023, The Athletic dubbed Teller an unofficial member of the team. He's regularly plastered across the Jumbotron at games and, when there's not a game to watch, keeps himself busy by collecting baseball cards, which is something he first started doing with his dad. He told People, My fandom for it, as far as collecting things associated with the game, has remained a part of it for me. That's the thing about Philly. They show up for their teams. It's a blue-collar city. Miles Teller's acting career officially began during his sophomore year of high school when he starred in his first play. Teller admitted that his interest in school theater was initially piqued because he had a crush on the school drama teacher, but he quickly discovered that acting was his true calling. He told the Tampa Bay Times, "...when I got on stage and got the first laugh, I was hooked. It absolutely felt like something had been missing from my life up to that point." Despite being attracted to making an audience laugh, Teller had no interest in pursuing stand-up comedy. Instead, the actor has veered toward more dramatic roles at every opportunity, starting with his very first role, one that fans will find quite familiar. He told Entertainment Weekly, "...the first play I ever did was Footloose, and I played Willard." Teller would later play the same character in the 2011 movie, and he credits his drama teacher, Beth Betty, with kickstarting his career, telling the Tampa Bay Times that he wouldn't have done so much at such a young age had she not come to his school. On reflection, he felt lucky to be in her classes, which were operating at a college level, the perfect preparation for his later studies at New York University's Tisch School of the Arts. Teller's professional acting career was almost over before it began. In 2007, when he was only 20, he was involved in a serious car accident. Teller recalled to ABC News, "...my buddy lost control of my car going 80 miles per hour. We flipped eight times. I got ejected out the window. The car landed, and I was just laying like 50 feet from the car, unconscious, covered in blood." Teller was such a mess from the crash that his friend thought he was dead. Fortunately, he survived and mostly recovered from his injuries. However, he does have scars on his face as a result. He also has two pieces of gravel still lodged beneath his skin. My buddy got out of the car, just instantly looked at me over there and, and, and just thought I was dead. Surprisingly, the scars, which he felt were holding him back, proved to be an asset when he auditioned for the 2010 drama Rabbit Hole. He told The Guardian, "...when I was first auditioning for projects, they'd say, "'Miles is a good actor, but it doesn't make sense for the character to have scars.'" But John Cameron Mitchell, the Rabbit Hole director, he loved it. He was like, "'It's your character secret.'" Filming the movie proved to be an emotional experience for Teller, though. His character Jason is behind the wheel and accidentally kills the son of a couple. Tragically, shortly before filming, two of Teller's friends died in separate motor accidents, making the film all too real. After eight years, Miles Teller reprised the role of Willard Hewitt in Footloose, but this time on the big screen instead of on a high school stage. He starred in the 2011 adaptation of the musical drama, but he was originally seeking a different part. He told Entertainment Tonight that the casting director made the switch. I went in auditioning for Ren. She asked if I could do a southern accent, and I said, absolutely. But inside, I always wanted to be Willard. I was built for Willard. The major plotline for Willard's character is his inability to dance, although this is not a problem Teller shares. The actor shows off his moves at the end of the movie to demonstrate Willard's dance lessons have been paying off, and his brief moves in Top Gun Maverick went viral. He told Extra TV the Top Gun beach dance is something he does to relax, and he didn't even know the camera was on him. Naturally, the spontaneous moment ended up being a fan-favorite scene in the movie. That was a move that me and my buddies, like, would just bust out at parties. Miles Teller and Shailene Woodley first met in 2012. Teller told showbizjunkies.com that they had about an hour to get to know each other before they began filming the romantic drama The Spectacular Now, which was released the following year. They connected immediately. Teller said, "...we kind of found our relationship through production. When you have somebody who's really listening to you, it's nice to work with that." 
The pair shared the screen again when they both starred in the Divergent franchise. But while they definitely have chemistry on screen, in real life, their relationship is purely platonic. Over the years, Woodley has grown close with Teller's now wife, Kelly Sperry, and Woodley was an honored guest at the couple's wedding. The pair continued to support each other, too, and when Teller starred in Top Gun Maverick, Woodley highlighted their close bond by sharing a picture of her posing in front of a poster for the movie. In the Instagram caption, she hyped up her friend and wrote, "'Proud sister moment happening over here.'" Teller likewise gushed about their bond, telling people, "'We are really good friends. We've been very close for years.'" Despite his close bond with Shailene Woodley, Miles Teller has mixed feelings about their movie franchise. Teller told W Magazine that filming Divergent left him pretty hollow. "'I was dead inside. I didn't have an interesting part in Divergent, and I'd taken the film for business reasons. It was the first movie I'd done that was going to have an international audience. I called my agent and said, "'This sucks.'" It seems like Teller made his feelings about the movie pretty clear. However, when his comments were turned into headlines by outlets like THR, he backtracked. He spoke out on X, formerly known as Twitter, proclaiming, "'I've never done a movie for business reasons. I'm proud to be a part of the Divergent franchise.'" He then changed his stance once more, clarifying to the Los Angeles Times that business reasons were in fact a part of his decision to take the role, just not the driving factor. Additionally, he addressed his dead-inside remark, saying he was simply exhausted from the four-month shoot. Teller's comments clearly didn't get him in trouble with producers, though, as he returned to the franchise for two sequels. The 2014 psychological drama Whiplash follows a 19-year-old aspiring jazz drummer as he's pushed to his limits by his emotionally manipulative instructor at a fictitious music college in New York. The movie was a serious lane change for Miles Teller after Divergent. For one thing, it had a much lower budget, and it was shot in just 19 days, far less than the four months it took to shoot Divergent. He was also paid just $8,000, a meager salary compared to the $3.5 million he allegedly raked in for Top Gun Maverick. But who can put a price on the three Academy Awards the movie claimed, including one for his co-star J.K. Simmons? While Teller's training for Divergent consisted of working out, getting in shape for Whiplash meant locking himself away and relearning how to play the drums in a jazz style. This pushed him out of his comfort zone, but was no hardship, really, as Teller had been dabbling with drums since he was 15. He told IndieWire, "...this movie, for me, was by far the closest I've come to life imitating art." My mom wanted all of her kids to play music, and my house was constantly filled with, you know, music and kind of controlled chaos. In August 2015, Miles Teller was featured on the cover of Esquire. He was fresh off the buzz of Whiplash, which was a critical smash and had cleaned up during award season. Being profiled by the magazine was another major career achievement for the young actor, but it didn't go the way he might have hoped. Instead, Esquire branded him in a negative light, writing, "...he's kind of a d It began a fall from grace. The negative press continued, and Teller ended up with a bad reputation, which followed him around for years. This wasn't aided by his public intoxication arrest in 2017. However, he told The Guardian that Esquire's depiction of him wasn't an accurate representation of who he was. And in 2017, Teller defended himself to Vulture. "...If how that story made me look was how I really was, I think I was the biggest douchebag too. I know who I am, and it's not who I was in that story." In the same month as Esquire cover profile was released, Miles Teller made a superhero debut in the rebooted Fantastic Four movie, which didn't help anything as it was a critical and commercial flop. The movie, which sees Teller take on the role of Reed Richards, alongside Kate Mara as Sue Storm, Michael B. Jordan as Johnny Storm, and Jamie Bell as Ben Grimm, holds a measly critical score of 9% on Rotten Tomatoes. Following the film's release, there was a lot of critical analysis discussing why the film had failed, with many seemingly pointing to a lack of focus and unity behind the screen. Even screenwriter Jeremy Slater felt that he and director Josh Trank did not have the same vision. The movie's poor reception was a devastating blow for Teller. During an interview on Happy, Sad, Confused, he said, "...people think that when you make something like a Fantastic Four that doesn't do well, people think, oh, you phoned it in. And it couldn't be more untrue. You work harder on the bad films, or the films that turn out maybe not the way you intended, because something's not working." Teller felt that the film's shortcomings weren't due to a lack of effort. "...I thought it was kind of unjustly critiqued that way. I think it's unfortunate that a movie like that becomes a kind of a scarlet letter on a resume when so many talented people worked really hard." Don't turn on me now, <laughs> audience. Bleed for this is the true story of world champion boxer Vinny the Pasmanian Devil Pazienza, and how he fought his way back into the ring after a near-fatal crash left him unable to walk from a broken neck. It's also the story of how Teller started to claw back his reputation. Teller was initially shocked to learn he'd booked the role of Vinny, but thanks to director Ben Younger taking a chance on him, it ended up going his way. 
However, it required a serious physical transformation. Teller was in good shape from filming Insurgent, the second movie in the Divergent series, but it wasn't enough. As soon as he booked the role, he started working with a nutritionist and personal trainer, Daryl Foster. They started by making sure he was getting all the vitamins he needed. Then Teller started training, working day in and day out for five months. He told Muscle & Fitness, "...once I was boxing, day-to-day -day was four hours boxing, two hours of weights, maybe another hour of cardio. At the end of it, Teller weighed no more than a lean, mean 168 pounds. Plus, he really knew how to box, as Foster honed in on his technique." The trainer told Men's Journal, "...I didn't want to see anything that looked like play fighting on that set." Miles Teller met model Kelly Sperry at the Black Keys' Grammy Awards after-party in 2013, and the rest is history. They started dating shortly after, and during the early days of their relationship, Sperry traveled around the globe with Teller so he could continue filming movies. They traveled for leisure, too, and one epic adventure, which included a trip to the Seychelles before they embarked on an African safari, turned out to be the perfect place for Teller to pop the question, though he became nervous about the possibility of an animal attack. You, uh asked her, you were on safari in Africa? On an African safari, yeah. Oh, um, that's pretty... I don't know if I recommend it. Two years later, the pair had a destination wedding in Maui. They picked the location because Sperry and her family regularly vacationed there. The couple seem to be blissfully happy together and can be regularly seen packing on the PDA at red carpet events. Teller even gushes about his wife online. To celebrate their second anniversary, he took to X and said, "...two years ago today, I married the woman of my dreams. There isn't a day that goes by where I'm not reminded of how much I truly love and adore you. Thank you for your kindness and unconditional support, Kelly. I would be lost without you." Sperry regularly shares equally touching tributes to her beau on Instagram, and in one post commemorating their Super Bowl commercial collaboration with Bud Light, she mentioned their future kids, so the duo might be welcoming a new addition sooner rather than later. As Miles Teller finally emerged from underneath the gray cloud that was his 2015 Esquire profile, he found himself in the middle of a different drama. He contracted COVID-19 in July 2021, when the Paramount Plus series The Offer, a miniseries about the making of The Godfather, was scheduled to begin. As a result, Teller was plagued by rumors that he was an anti-vaxxer, which upset Taylor Swift fans as she had cast him and his wife in her music video for I Bet You Think About Me, Taylor's version. Ultimately, everything worked out as production resumed on the offer when everyone was healthy, and Swift's music video was released in November. However, the actor felt the need to defend himself in a now-deleted tweet. Teller wrote, "'Hey guys, I don't usually feel the need to address rumors here, but I am vaccinated and have been for a while. The only thing I'm anti is hate.'" 2022 was a banner year for Miles Teller. In the space of a few months, The Offer, Spiderhead, and Top Gun Maverick were all released. Top Gun Maverick was life-changing for Teller, who played the role of Rooster and got to share major screen time with Tom Cruise. Interestingly, Rooster and Cruise's character Maverick have a fraught relationship for most of the film, but Teller and Cruise definitely kept all the drama on screen, as they bonded instantly in real life. Cruise mentored Teller and some of his co-stars on set, and their relationship has continued well beyond filming the movie. Along with staying in touch to discuss a possible threequel for the Top Gun franchise, Teller also calls Cruz to ask for advice. He revealed to E, "...when we first started getting going and as we developed a personal relationship outside of this filming, Tom told me, he said, "'Miles, call me if you need anything,' and he meant it. And there's been many times just in my life or career that I've called Tom for advice, and he answers every time." Celebrities have a love-hate relationship with social media, as we all do most of the time. There are some who prefer to live their life completely offline, while others find that having a social media platform helps them to connect with their fans. Miles Teller falls into the offline camp, at least when it comes to Instagram. Teller told Playboy, "...I've been told that having an Instagram account will help me book more roles, get more endorsement deals. It makes you more of a brand, but I'm not interested. I want to build my fan base through movies and movies alone." Teller made this statement in 2016, but has since been on X since 2011, so he still has a limited social media presence and a way to connect with fans online. And in lieu of his own Instagram account, his wife Kelly Sperry often posts on his behalf. When clips of Rooster's shirtless beach scene were doing the rounds on Instagram and TikTok, she shared a message from him to his fans. Loving the Rooster love, Miles says thank you to everyone who has seen the film, and he shares in this moment with you. Many actors diversify their careers. While some go into production or directing, others put their time and energy into projects that have nothing to do with the entertainment industry. For Miles Teller, he got into the alcohol business simply because he fell in love with a specific product. He discovered the Finnish-inspired brand Long Drink at a liquor store in New York. 
While they weren't well known in the US at the time, Teller quickly became a fan and started ordering products directly from the company. But when he was introduced to one of the co-founders through a mutual friend, he decided to take his fandom to another level. He told Forbes, I just wanted to figure out a way to get involved with it because I am a champion for it. To come in from the ground floor right when they started taking off, that was perfect for me. His role as a co-owner is simple. He explained, For me, this is just a matter of showing how long drink fits in with my lifestyle in an organic way. I really believe in it, extending the reach of it, because I think it's a great alternative to a lot of alcoholic beverages out there. 